Well, they attract crime and vandalism and become eyesores. Abandoned houses are a problem in many Topeka neighborhoods. 49 News community reporter Liz Zamora has this investigation into houses from hell. Well, Ben and Jennifer, some the solution to a house that's well past its prime may seem obvious. Either you fix it up or you tear it down. And many capital city neighbors just want something done. Some have been waiting for years. But we spoke to an owner of one dilapidated home who says it's not that simple. Many of these houses may look familiar. They are scattered throughout Topeka neighborhoods. Some have been abandoned for a year or two. It's a real eyesore. Others for decades. I know that it's been boarded up at least 25 years. ACORN, or the Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now, recently came to Topeka. The organization takes up community issues in cities across the country and has made abandoned houses one of its priorities here in Topeka. Mike Jackson is a member of ACORN and a longtime member of the community. This is a capital city. It should not look like this. But for one neighborhood, these houses pale in comparison to this home in northwest Topeka. It's kind of sad, really. I'd like to see it tore down. This is what has neighbors so upset. Code Enforcement Inspector Don Carey says there has been an order of demolition in this house located at 1425 Northwest Jackson since November of last year. But he says even back then it didn't look this bad. The owner took out the floors and that's where everything literally started falling apart. Now the walls is separated from the foundation, the siding has been removed, and in some places you can see daylight through the holes in the walls. Are you surprised to see it like this? Yes, I am quite surprised. Even the owner admits the house is pretty far gone. It's probably one of the worst. <laughs> I mean, you can say it. Uh, that doesn't, doesn't bother me. Steve Dugan bought the house more than six months ago. He fixes up old homes and says he can make a house like this look new again. He was going to rehab it for his parents' retirement home. I hadn't had it two weeks, and man, I was hauled into court. It was at that court date that there was an order for demolition, but the owner wanted to do it himself. If you're going to do your own demolition, you've got to be a licensed contractor to do that with the city. Dugan says he's not a licensed contractor, and Carrie says the city must tear it down. This could cost Dugan anywhere from $3,000 on up. I think it should come down immediately. Yesterday would have been too soon. The front has been secured by a fence, but the back only has this caution tape warning people away. Do you believe that it's dangerous? Yes. I think that wall could collapse and the whole thing come down. Dugan says he simply ran out of money and out of time. I'm really disappointed that I wasn't able to get onto it as fast mm -hmm. to prove to the city that I can do it. And Sheila Albright offers some neighborly help after the walls come tumbling down. I'd love to go over there and just put some wildflowers in. But Dugan says this won't deter him from what he says he does best. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. This time I'm coming up on the short end of the stick. <laughs> Now in part two of Houses from Hell, I'll explain how complicated the process is to get rid of an abandoned house and how our investigation into this home, which is literally falling apart, has led one code inspector to call for an emergency order of demolition. I say it should go real quick, as quick as we can get it down. Now we'll follow along as the city brings down this dilapidated house. And in part two of our series on Houses from Hell, it continues on Wednesday.